Many debates on using animals for food are grounded in ethics or environmental topics. But we can also address these topics by questioning whether they are good or bad for our health. And that's exactly what we will be doing today. Let's have a look at the health effects of consuming milk and other dairy products. Even though this seems to be a straightforward question, it may not be so simple to answer. But I think it's worth trying. Health, of course, is a central part in happiness and well-being. And I personally believe that I need to investigate questions like these in order to be able to perceive myself as an honest and responsible human being. The alternative of not looking into topics like these implies to be willfully ignorant. In other words, I owe it to myself. Now, before diving into the topic, I encourage you to not just take my words for granted. After watching this video, keep exploring the topic and think for yourself. So let's start with some semantics. When I'm talking about milk in this video, what I mean is milk from a cow or other domestic animal. I make this clear because there are also plant-based milks, such as soy milk, oat milk and more. They are produced without animal products and are therefore vegan products. When I talk about dairy, what I mean is food such as ice cream, cheese or yogurt made primarily of or from milk. Some advice for those who think eggs are dairy. Try to turn milk into eggs to prove your sickness. There are many different opinions and studies that make health related claims about dairy consumption and it gets more difficult when you realize that a part of these studies are funded by companies that participate in the dairy industry. In other words, these companies have an interest in study results that favor dairy. The statistics with food beverage industry funded research show this clearly. Research with industry funding is approximately 4 to 8 times more likely to be favorable to the financial interests of the sponsor than research without industry funding. So this is an important potential bias that we should be aware of when formulating a conclusion. And a potential personal bias should be recognized as well. I like milk, I like ice cream, I like yogurt. I've eaten dairy all my life. When health-related disadvantages outweigh the advantages, I might have to conclude that I should stop or limit consuming dairy. That situation would have big implications for my daily life. With some important semantics and biases covered, let's now take a look at some data on dairy consumption. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization short FAO, has shown data on dairy consumption and production. The average global milk consumption is about 90 kg per person per year, with the highest averages, which is about 200 kg per person per year or above, in Northern America, Australia and Europe. This number includes the milk equivalents of dairy products, but does not include butter. Milk is about 1 kg per liter, therefore a consumption of more than 200 kg per year is on average more than half a liter every day. Milk contains 18 of 22 essential nutrients including calcium, phosphorus and vitamin D, which are of a special importance for the skeleton. And also the instinctive thought that milk may be beneficial is not that strange when you realize the reason why cows and other mammals produce it. Namely, milk is produced to feed a newborn child and provide them with nutrients for development. We are drinking the milk from cows who were pregnant, have given birth and are now triggered biologically to produce milk for their calves. Well, there are ethical questions that can arise from this. This background information is also important for understanding the rationale of thinking about milk as a nutrient-rich drink. It has often been said that milk consumption is good for bones, that it prevents fractures. 
This message has been widespread by the dairy industry and from adults to child. But when we look, most studies show no evidence for this. A systematic review and meta-analysis concluded that a greater intake of milk and dairy products was not associated with a lower risk of osteoporosis and hip fracture. Long-term studies show similar results. One study followed 75,000 people for 12 years and another study followed over 60,000 people for 11 years. Both showed no protective effect of milk consumption on fracture risk. And there are more. So, we should be very skeptical about the claims put forward by the industry. One study even suggested that milk consumption may be associated with a higher rate of death. But to be fair, the study did not make dietary recommendations based on this. But the topic of bones and fracture risk is not all. There are other potential benefits we can investigate. A meta-analysis, for example, found that milk and total dairy products decreased the risk of colorectal cancer, while cheese did not. The World Cancer Research Fund and American Institute for Cancer Research also concluded that milk probably decreases the risk of colorectal cancer. But this may largely be attributable to the protective effects of calcium on colorectal cancer. It has been shown that total calcium intake is associated with a statistical significant lower risk of colon cancer, independent on the source of intake. So to summarize, there is a strong evidence that consumption of dairy products and consumption of calcium in general can help to protect against colorectal cancer. Furthermore, there is some limited evidence that high milk intake may also decrease the risk of getting bladder cancer. Now, let's also have a look at some potential disadvantages of consuming milk or dairy. First of all, dairy and diets high in calcium have been shown to increase the risk of getting prostate cancer. Also, a relationship can be established between dairy consumption and progression of prostate cancer. Therefore, men have explicitly been advised to reduce or minimize consumption of dairy products. Based on the evidence for potential harm, the World Cancer Research Fund and American Institute for Cancer Research also has not made a recommendation for consuming dairy products. Some have suggested that consuming dairy products may also increase the risk of getting endometrium cancer. When we look at cancer in total, we can also see benefits when dairy intake is reduced. A meta-analysis, for example, reports a significant protective effect of a vegan diet in respect to the total cancer incidence. They showed a significant reduced risk of 15%. And others have reported that consuming dairy also increases the risk of autoimmune conditions, acne and some childhood ailments. As we can see, there are many studies that show consuming dairy can cause us harm or do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Do we really need milk to stay healthy? When we look at the total global population, many people don't have the biological ability to process dairy because of lactose intolerance. About 68% of the global population has this, and when they would consume lactose, a sugar found in dairy products, this can lead to diarrhea, nausea, flatulence, abdominal pain and other symptoms. So, a global recommendation of consuming dairy is already out of the question. From what we have seen, there are some advantages of calcium intake, irrespective of source. And on the other hand, we have disadvantages of dairy consumption. So ideally, I think we should aim for having the best of both worlds by not consuming dairy or milk and paying more attention to levels of calcium intake from non-dairy sources. Based on this, when looking at health alone, I should limit or stop consuming dairy. So what about calcium supplements? Are they a suitable replacement for the calcium levels? While they have been studied and have shown some beneficial results, calcium supplements can increase the risk of cardiovascular events. 
Thus, preferably, dietary calcium should be obtained through other sources, like green leafy vegetables. To conclude, milk and dairy products are currently consumed by a minority of the global population and they are not necessary in the diet and can even be harmful to our personal health. It would be ideal to consume a dairy-free, healthy diet with enough nutrient-dense foods. We should try to meet our nutrient requirements without the health risk associated with dairy products.